What's going on, guys? Tower number hit nine here with another Star Wars Unlimited gameplay uh, commentary video. This time we have myself playing Green Luke against Boba Fett, or against Kison playing uh, Green Boba. So Green Luke is a deck that I think at one time was very popular. Ended up not not necessarily faring as well as Red Luke after after all was said and done, but um. There have been some new cards that I think are relevant for Green Luke. So we've seen like the Echo Base Defender, the new Alliance Dispatcher. Those are those are some pretty solid cards. And uh, Strike True, another removal option. So we're going to give this a test here and see if Green Luke has uh, has been beefed up. So on this first turn, Kisan ends up actually missing his turn one play, which I am uh, fine with seeing. I will play a Restored Arc, uh, Restored Arc 170 here. So. I could wing leader this restored arc, but what I'm thinking really about is a resupply here. Yeah, my opponent plays a waylay, sending the arc back to hand. So that's one thing you got to think about when you're playing against Cunning. Sometimes those attachment based or like give your guy extra stats plays are risky. So we're going to just go for the resupply here and maybe bring Luke out a little sooner. If my opponent doesn't hit any ramp himself, this means that I'll actually be able to play Luke on the same or deploy Luke on the same turn as Bobo, which is a very good thing. Uh, very good thing if possible. Um, instead of arriving later and being more likely to get picked off. So in this situation, um, I can use the new Echo Base Defender card, which I think is a really solid, uh, I think it's a really solid card. So this is a three cost, four, three that has Sentinel. So what I can do is I can play that card and give it a shield with Luke, which will make it an annoying uh, thing for my opponent. My opponent actually leads off with a resupply here, though. So we know that Boba Fett will be deploying this turn. Um, and that shielded Echo Base Defender is honestly, in my opinion, a great counter because Echo Base Defender deployed, so that's a 4-3 Sentinel. My opponent deploys Boba, and then the shield from Luke means that if Boba attacks into this, he ends up taking 4 damage, not killing the defender, and then being in an easy place to be defeated next turn. Um, and the fact that it has Sentinel also means Boba can't just hit the base. So my opponent ends up just taking the initiative, not swinging with Boba Fett here, and I'm certainly pretty happy to see that. And now I'll be able to deploy Luke this turn, and I have some nice tricks, uh, some nice tricks waiting. You know, we have the uh, Jedi lightsaber and Luke's lightsaber here, which should allow Luke to do a lot of damage, assuming that he doesn't just get exhausted. So I'm thinking about the uh, thinking about what to do here. A another waylay would be useful in this sort of scenario, but I'm not sure if he has one, having already spent one on that earlier turn. Ends up playing Fett's Fire Spray, so Fett's Fire Spray is a very good card, um, but it also uses all his resources, and th and this makes me pretty confident that I'm going to be able to deal with Boba this turn. So I deploy Luke. He also this also means he doesn't have any resources for a potential exhaust effect. So Luke is a four seven, and on attack you may give a shield to a friendly unit. Fett's Fire Spray hits my base for 5. Um, in this situation, I'm going to be able to give Luke the Jedi Lightsaber, so that's going to bring his stats up. It's plus 3, plus 3, and on attack, he gives the Defender minus 2, minus 2, so now Luke is a 7-10 and can defeat Boba in one hit while only taking 2 damage back thanks to the damage reduction. Seeing that Kisan decides to have Boba attack and break the shield from the Echo Base Defender before Luke would just attack and defeat him, but I have Luke attack his base, give another shield to the Echo Base Defender with the on attack ability, and then I'll have the Echo Base Defender defeat Boba. Um, I, I could have just done more pressure to the base in that situation, but I was a little worried that there would be some other trick or disruption. We are also going to play a uh, Restored Arc, just to make the, uh, make the field a little bit better. And this turn, we have the uh, we can play Luke Skywalker Jedi Knight. Which should be in a um, should be in a pretty good position to uh, do some do some damage. If my opponent removes one of my units, I can use Luke Skywalker Jedi Knight to defeat Fett's Fire Spray. So one thing that I could do is attack with my restored arc into Fett's Fire Spray, have it be defeated, and then Luke Skywalker Jedi Knight is ready to go. Let's see what my opponent does. Uh, it ends up being an overwhelming barrage. So this is actually this is pretty solid for my opponent. Um, so it's going to be. Uh, seven total damage, so that ends up being five there, 
I think we actually, I think we, I actually miscounted, or no, I'm sorry, it ends up being six and then one left over for Luke. I had thought for a moment that it was only five to kill both those units, but it was, it was six. So there's one left over for Luke. So now Luke Skywalker, uh, Jedi Knight would not actually defeat Fed's Fire Spray thanks to the temporary HP. So instead I bring out Bright Hope, which is a Sentinel, and that will absorb this attack to prevent my base from taking seven damage. Unfortunately for me, I don't get to shield it with Luke beforehand, but Luke gets to swing in for seven damage to my opponent's base. My opponent plays a, I believe that is a recruit, uh, looking at three of the top five cards. And I'm just gonna take the initiative at this point. <laughs> So Luke is really powerful uh, with this upgrade with the lightsaber. He has the ability to give a shield to friendly units, but I'm not actually really making use of that in this situation because I don't have other units on the board right now. Uh, however, it's overall a pretty it's overall a pretty good scenario. My opponent actually uh, uses the recruit to find a season short trooper, which does get the bonus stats. So she, season short trooper is a two cost two three that gets plus two power. Uh, when you have, it gets plus two power uh, when you have six or more resources. So my opponent ends up actually deciding to put some major damage on Luke by ambushing in the short trooper with the energy conversion lab. So Luke ends up taking a heavy hit. In this situation, I have an interesting choice to make. So one thing that I could do is play Luke's lightsaber, which would heal all the damage on Luke and give him a shield. <laughs> so that would be a really strong play in one sense. But the problem with that play is that if my opponent has some kind of exhaust or disruption, he can then use it on Luke and prevent me from hitting the base. So I'm thinking, you know, first thing I want to do is actually just get that damage onto my opponent's base. I can swing in for seven, and that will leave my opponent kind of on death's door. And then if he has something to deal with Luke, you know, so be it. If not, I can play Luke's lightsaber as my next action, heal up Luke, and be in a very strong spot for next turn. Maybe also playing Kanan. Um, and it, but if he does defeat Luke, I can use Luke Skywalker Jedi Knight um, and defeat his Vets Fire Spray uh, because I do need the stronger version of Luke Skywalker Jedi Knight's ability. So he ambushes me with Darth Vader. Uh, so Vader, the seven cost green unit, is a five seven ambush. So with that five attack, does have enough power to defeat Luke here, and also searches the top ten cards for a uh, for up to three resources of villainy units and puts them into play for free. So that Green Vader is a very effective card and ends up bringing in a Boba Disintegrator, definitely something I'm not so happy to see. Um, luckily for me, uh, even though that Vader does have seven HP, uh, it ends up being a trade because Luke had that Jedi lightsaber. I then play Jedi Luke, who has the stronger version of the when played effect because a friendly unit has been defeated. So I give uh, Fett's Fire Spray minus six, minus six, uh, getting it off the board. And we're now in a very strong spot with my Jedi Luke facing off with a Boba Disintegrator. Um, now, if my opponent has some kind of exhaust tech or a waylay or something, he could get Jedi Luke off the board here and avoid losing immediately. But it looks like he doesn't have it, so it ends up actually just being a concession. Uh, ultimately, this game went very well for me. You know, my opponent had a slow start, and I was able to, I was able to really cause some problems. In particular, when Boba deployed, uh, being met with that shielded Echo base defender and not having an easy response uh, was ultimately a scenario that left Boba kind of in the lurch, and he didn't end up being very effective. So we are sideboarding now, and what I'm doing is I'm going to be bringing in. Um, I'm bringing in Vanquish and Redemption Medical Frigate to help deal with Fett's Fire Spray, which is kind of my main concern in the late game. Sorry about that, guys. I had the hiccups a bit. And I think we're going to remove the Strike True here, which is um, that's kind of a better card against more of an aggro deck where you're trying to deal with small spaceships and stuff like that. It's not, not really what I'm most concerned with here. So then I think I may be at 51... Be uh, I don't remember actually how many bank. I think I brought in two vanquishes and a redemption medical frigate, which put me at 51. So then we're going to want to remove one other card. I think I end up removing a Yoda. Yoda, uh, you know, Yoda is not a bad card, but playing Yoda and giving him a lightsaber is really strong in some decks, but it's dangerous against um, it's dangerous against this matchup because my opponent can waylay him. Um, if my opponent's playing Traitorous, he can take him over. Uh, I wasn't thinking of that at the time, but my opponent discussed that later. 
Um, this deck also, this version is not actually the right sideboard. It's kind of an earlier version of the deck. Um, I do now have Confiscate in sideboard. I would not be comp uh, sideboarding in Confiscate right now because I haven't seen a traders from my opponent, but if I had seen it, I would bring in the Confiscate. My opponent plays a frontline shuttle to cost 1-3 action, defeat this unit, attack with a unit, even if that unit is exhausted, it cannot attack a base for this attack. Hi, however, I'm going to just bring in a Battlefield Marine, nice efficient basic stats type unit. And, uh, you know, 2 cost 3-3 three, three seems pretty good. So then the frontline shuttle for my opponent and the Battlefield Marine for me, and we'll see how things go from there. This turn I can go with a um, Echo Base Defender or a Fleet Lieutenant. So the Fleet Lieutenant I think is a nice option here. Uh, Kisan leads off with the shuttle. I ended up not playing the Fleet Lieutenant this turn, which I actually think is wrong. So I, I, I play the Echo Base Defender. I think that it would have been better to do Fleet Lieutenant into the um, Fleet Lieutenant into the Marine hit for five, and then I can play the Echo Base Defender on the next turn and give it a shield, um, which I think is potentially a good disruptive thing to do against Boba. My opponent did play a resupply this turn and is now up to five resources, so we are going to see Boba deploying. I'm looking at my cards here. So the Redemption Medical Frigate is good, but I now have, I believe, three copies in the deck. Um, I could resource that. I have two lightsabers. I could resource one of those, maybe resource Luke's lightsaber and just go for the Jedi lightsaber. I end up deciding to resource, well, I'm th I I almost decide to resource Kanan, and then I uh, and then I go for the Redemption Medical Frigate instead. So my opponent comes in with Bosk for an ambush, defeating my uh, Echo Base Defender. And in this situation, I have a few options. So one thing that I could do is give the uh, Battlefield Marine uh, a Jedi lightsaber, which would allow him to defeat Bosk and remain alive. Another thing that I could do is just trade immediately and then play Kanan. Another thing that I could do is use ECL to ambush in Kanan to defeat Bosk and get some healing and leave my Battlefield Marine still alive. Really, you know, it's 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 not super clear what the best what the best way to do that is going to be, but we'll see how it goes. I do want to get that boss off the field to prevent the bonus damage there, which can be very annoying. And I end up deciding that I'm just going to take the trade with the battlefield marine. One damage to my base from the frontline shuttle. I play Kanan. Now, at this point, if my opponent has shoot first or snapshot reflexes, Boba can kill Kanan. Uh, especially with a shoot first, he could kill Kanan and not take any damage himself, which would be a very strong, uh, very strong opportunity for my opponent. But he ends up just going for the base here. That does ready up two resources, though. And then we see another frontline shuttle hit the board. So... Kind of a big turn for my opponent. Ended up clearing out two of my units. So Boss kind of got the two for one, clearing out both of my small ground units. Then did some damage to the base. Played another front line shuttle. Got Boba out there. So there is one thing, though. My opponent had three resources and played a front line shuttle. This makes me think that he did not have Waylay. Because I think if Kisan had Waylay, he would have used it on Kanan there instead of playing the shuttle, since he already has a shuttle in play. So what I'm going to do is make a risky move here and give Kanan a Jedi Lightsaber. So with a Jedi Lightsaber, Kanan gets plus three, plus three, and because he is a Force unit on attack, uh, the defending unit gets minus two, minus two for the phase. So that would uh, this allows Kanan to defeat Boba in one hit, and actually to only take two damage in retaliation as well. Um, I am kind of making the bet that my opponent does not have the waylay, because I think if he had had the waylay, he already would have played it. Now, there is a risk in this situation that my opponent will play, like, no good to me dead or something, end up exhausting Kanan and causing me some worries. But, you know, under the circumstances, I think, um, you know, I think that's a that's something that is kind of an acceptable risk. If he does have one of those effects and he exhausts Kanan, that means he might not have it for when Luke deploys next turn. And maybe Luke can get some big results with a lightsaber of his own. So the buffed Kanan here... Uh, threatening Boba substantially, and we'll see what my opponent does in response. And these Jedi lightsaber uh, plus force unit combinations are really strong. Um, there's kind of a rule that I like to follow for combos, which is you want to have combos that are made up of two good cards, like two cards that you want to play anyway. Um, so there are some combos where it's like, oh, if I have these two bad cards, they come together and do something really good. 
Um, but what I want to have is I want to have combos where it's two good cards. And when they when they operate together, it's even better. So I think like Kanan is a card I want to play anyway. Jedi Lightsaber is a card I want to play anyway. And when you combine them, they can have a really scary effect. So that that's the type of combo that I like to see personally. He saw him thinking over what to do. The fact that it's taken him so long, I think, means that this is a tough situation, and he doesn't really have an easy answer here, which is something that I'm uh, I'm happy to see personally. It does mean that I'll be able to uh, do some do some good stuff here. So he ends up actually attacking into Kanan with Boba. So that I think that's actually a pretty reasonable play. So basically, the reasoning behind something like that is um, okay. If I'm going to get defeated anyway, I may as well attack him instead of him attacking me, so that that way I don't get uh, I do more damage because the minus two minus two isn't in effect. And then indeed this uh, this allows my opponent to then play Agent Callus to trade with Kanan and draw a card. So even though Kanan did end up defeating Boba, my opponent was able to get Kanan off the board as well. So he's no longer going to be a huge menace in the ground arena. I then play a basic restored Arc One Seventy. And my opponent now has to choose between taking the initiative or doing damage with the shuttles. Ends up choosing the damage with the shuttles, so I take the initiative instead. Base takes two damage from the frontline shuttle attacks, and now I'm thinking about what I want to do. This turn, I can deploy Luke. Um, yeah, so I can deploy Luke. I have Luke's lightsaber to potentially buff him up. I have... I can, yeah, so I end, I end up indeed uh, leading off by just deploying Luke before my opponent can do anything to threaten Luke directly. We then see an ATST ambush with the energy conversion lab doing six damage to Luke. And Luke is now in peril because the shuttles can be used to do another attack, but I have Luke's lightsaber, which is a super hard counter here. So Luke's lightsaber, when played, uh, it's a uh, two cost attachment for plus three power, plus one HP. And when played, you uh, if the attached unit is Luke, you can heal all damage on him and give him a shield. So Luke was one hit away from death, but I ended up actually... Uh... So in that situation, uh, I, I sort of make a mistake. I, I thought that the shuttle was a 1-2, so I was going to just tag it normally with the, um, with the restored arc. But my opponent points out it's actually a 1-3, so that doesn't work. He graciously lets me take it back. But uh, anyway, the Luke's lightsaber for the full heal and shield is a giant reversal in that situation. Because my opponent could have actually defeated Luke this turn pretty easily. He would have lost the ATST in one of the shuttles, but he would have gotten Luke off the board and done major damage to my base with the overwhelm on that ATST. But instead, that lightsaber means that not only did Luke survive, he got buffed, all that damage was wasted. Playing Luke's lightsaber on Luke when he's seriously damaged is like a giant swing play. And so I end up having Luke just go for the base for seven, uh, shielding up the restored arc. My reasoning at this point is, you know, that ATST is scary, but what I want to do right now is just damage to the base. Let's uh damage to the base, let's get uh get things moving towards a potential game win. My opponent takes the swing here. And I actually just take the initiative. So I could have used ECL to ambush the fleet lieutenant, kill uh, kill the ATST, and deal four damage to base with uh, restored arc. Amusingly, I draw two more Luke Skywalker Jedi Knights, which would put me in a great position for the rest of this game uh, if I needed to be. But I, but I actually, the reason I took initiative so early is because I have this fleet lieutenant and can use it with Luke to deal nine damage to the base, which is a win. So... That game, the Luke's lightsaber there was a huge play for me. That was a um, that put me in a very strong position. Instead of getting Luke uh, getting Luke defeated that turn with by those frontline shuttles with the ATST, I ended up allowing Luke to um, I ended up allowing Luke to sort of put the game on his back and carry it thanks to the uh, thanks to the huge heal and then being able to swing for seven and then nine to close out the game. So we are going to do one more here. Let's see if I can go 3-0. and oh.
Frontline Shuttle is a good card. It ha it has a nice like little trick ability. But one thing that's kind of a downside for it is it's on the table. So unlike some other tricks that you can hold in your hand and your opponent doesn't know that you, that you have them, Frontline Shuttle is a unit that you have to have on the board first. So the opponent kind of gets a chance to react or knows that you you know knows that it's an option available to you and therefore is more able to counter than we might see with some other cards. All right, let's go on to game three here. Let's see. Well, Kisan is going to lead us off with a Greedo here. Uh, Greedo is a 1 cost 3 1, and when defeated, you may discard the top card of your deck. And if it is a non unit card, you deal 2 damage, to, you may deal, uh, you deal 2 damage to a ground unit. So I am, under this circumstance, I have two plays. I could go for Restored Arc, but what I'm actually going to do here is play Mon Mothma. She lets me search my top five cards for a Rebel, and I have several good options with the Battlefield Marine, the Fleet Lieutenant, and uh, Bright Hope all being there. Bright Hope actually combos with Mon Mothma um, because you can use it to return Mon Mothma, draw a card, and then you can replay Mon Mothma and get a relevant ability again. But in this situation, uh, it doesn't seem like that's necessarily what I want to do, since I think I want to have Mon Mothma actually trade with Greedo rather than um, rather than staying in play for the Bright Hope draw. So what I actually do here is I use, I end up taking the Wing Leader, and my hope is that this will kind of misdirect my opponent into thinking that I'm going to Wing Leader Mon Mothma. That's actually not what I want to do here. Um, what I want to do here is just have Mon Mothma trade with Greedo, and then I can play uh, I can play Restored Arc and shield it for my turn. So Greedo swings into the base. I'm going to just take, go ahead and take out uh, take out Greedo with Mon Mothma. I think my opponent actually passed there. I'm going to play a Restored Arc. He's thinking about taking the initiative, but I think ends up playing a waylay. So yeah, because I didn't uh, go for the wing leader play, I avoided a potential uh, blowout or whatever from the waylay countering my buffed Mon Mothma. I guess in that situation though, if he had waylaid Mon Mothma, I, I'd honestly be kind of fine with it because I could replay her and draw a card again. So it might have been better to just go for the wing leader there directly. I'm not. I'm not actually sure. That's an that's an interesting sort of question though. Ultimately, though, I, I'm quite happy to take the trade and get Greedo off the field. So this turn, I'm going to play a... Um, I play the Echo Base Defender. My opponent ambushes a Super Laser Technician in, allowing him to play Boba this turn. But I'm then going to shield the Echo Base Defender with loot. And shields on this Echo Base Defender seem like a really good play to me. My opponent then deploys Boba. I take the initiative, and he's in this really awkward spot again. You know, he can attack into the Echo Base Defender, but he takes four damage and just removes a shield. And then the Echo Base Defender can just trade with Boba at the start of the next turn. So he actually ends up just passing, and Boba doesn't attack on that turn that he first played. The uh, the Echo Base Defender here seems like a really disruptive card to what my opponent is trying to do. Now, I can't deploy loot this turn, but I have some other options. So one thing that I could do is give the Echo Base Defender a Jedi Lightsaber. This would allow him to defeat Boba in one hit. The downside to that approach would be that giving him a Jedi Lightsaber would actually not... Um, it would not enable the minus two, minus two, and it would also... If my opponent had another waylay, it would be a huge blow to have my, you know, highly buffed unit get uh, get sent off the board like that. I do have uh, another Echo Base Defender, so one thing that I could do is, uh, so here I swing into Boba, inflicting four damage. The Echo Base Defender is still uh, on the board as a Sentinel, and I can follow up with, if Boba wants to attack, it ends up being a trade. Ah, but I actually say, uh, hang on, I realized that I had a better play, and my opponent graciously let me take it, take it back, so what I do here is I ambush a Fleet Lieutenant. 
So I resolve the when played first to hit for six, and then the fleet lieutenant hits Bilbo for three and clears him. The downside is I don't have anything else to do with the rest of my resources, but clearing out uh, clearing out Bilbo like that I think is very solid, and I am still now left in command of the field with that Echo Base Defender. Now, of course, my opponent still has a bunch of resources and can play cards, but, well, I just have to take the initiative. It would be really good if I had, like, a Battlefield Marine to follow up with, or a Restored Arc just to get another unit on the board and make better use of my resources, but overall I'm pretty happy with the ambush uh the ambush fleet lieutenant there to clear Bilba off the board i i feel like in these games i've really managed to limit the effect that boba can have on the game and that's been very favorable for me my opponent ends up playing a frontline shuttle and then just taking the initiative i believe or or no i had taken the initiative so he just passes so that that was a really good turn for me because my my opponent didn't have like a huge follow-up you know if there had been like boss or something like very impactful to follow up it might have been worse for me um, I swing in with the Echo Base Defender, inflicting 4 damage on my opponent's base. Um, the Frontline Shuttle swings and hits my base for 1. I deploy Luke Skywalker, who's now in a uh, good position to hopefully, uh, hopefully kind of take over the game. And I have some nice units in hand here to play as well, so I can use that uh, wing leader that I played earlier to buff Luke, for instance. I can uh, play another Echo Base Defender if I want. There's generally a fair number of things that I can do to just develop more of a board here. My opponent plays another shuttle. I believe I'm going to go ahead here and use a wing leader to buff Luke. The wing leader is vulnerable to the shuttle since it's a 2-1 and they're 1-3, but um, I can potentially give the wing leader a shield when Luke attacks. So wing leader buffing Luke, so now Luke is, is 6 power and 9 HP, and then my opponent plays uh, an overwhelming barrage. I believe when he played this, he uh, jokingly referred to it as an underwhelming barrage, though, because a barrage for 3 is not the greatest. But it is enough to take out the wing leader and the echo base defender, as well as dealing one damage to Luke. So you know he does get a he gets a two for one. It's not terrible. Um, so now my opponent has one resource, so there's no real disruption. He can play for one resource on Luke at this time. So what I can do here is play out a um, I can play out the other echo base defender that I had in my hand. My opponent now takes the initiative, and then Luke can hit uh, Boba's base there for 6 damage and give a shield to the Echo Base Defender. And, you know, I, I draw a Jedi Luke, which is really a very welcome, uh, very welcome unit of this phase in the game. My opponent uses, uh, my opponent uses Change of Heart to take control of my shielded Echo Base Defender. Honestly, a really strong play. It would be very annoying, except I have Jedi Luke and give the shielded Defender minus three, minus three, defeating the, uh, defeating it through the shield and opening the way for normal Luke to go ahead and swing in. Boba's ability, I believe, does not fire here because it's when an enemy unit leaves play. And at the time that the Echo Base Defender was defeated, it was actually my opponent's unit. So it is not an enemy unit leaving play. So I believe he does not actually get his resource back. He ends up playing a Crafty Smuggler, 2 cost 2-2, two, two, shielded. I'm going to go ahead and just hit the base here with Luke. We're trying to close things out. So... Luke can hit his base for 6 and shield Jedi Luke, and that's exactly what I'll do. Opponent takes the initiative. I could play the Redemption Medical Frigate this turn. My opponent waylays Jedi Luke. But uh, Leader Luke is still on the board. 
And I'm going to give him a Jedi lightsaber, which allows him to uh, swing for lethal damage. So unless my opponent has attachment removal or disruption or something, that's it. And he does not have it. So that's going to be another win for Green Luke over Green Boba. So ultimately, these games went very well for me. You know, afterwards, we were discussing some stuff. Kisan mentioned that he had made some changes to his Boba deck that he thought had maybe weakened it. Um, I think that one of the changes was that I believe he was no longer running like exhaust tricks. And I felt that uh, I felt that in this matchup, like no good to me dead and stuff like that would be very effective at, at you know, it might not it might not deal with Luke, but it would at least slow him down and let my opponent try to get some more answers. Um, I also had some good luck or some good some good setups so the you know, I kind of made the um, I kind of made the educated guess in game two that my opponent did not have a way late to counter Kanan, and that Jedi lightsaber on Kanan got a lot of value, and then uh, the Luke's lightsaber to heal up against that ATST was really big as well. Um, one of the star players for me, interestingly enough, was just Echo Base Defender plus a shield, which was causing a lot of problems for Boba Fett uh, in these games. Um, so yeah, those were uh, three games with uh, Command Luke versus Command Boba. I think both of these lists probably have some tinkering and stuff to do, but uh, you know they could be some could be some relatively strong decks. That's gonna do it for this one, guys. Thanks to y'all for watching, and we'll be back later with some more Star Wars Unlimited content. And we'll catch you guys later.